Hey everybody, Dodo really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Charming Empire along Sarah's route. Episode 12 already. I don't know how anybody complained about this being short. I mean, for a lot of these visual novels that pop up on Steam, this is actually pretty fairly decently long as far as those have gone. I mean, they're not as long as the AAA games like Code Realize or anything like that, but you know, for Steam games, it's pretty good. Well, anyway, let's continue on. We're thinking about overthrowing our brother and becoming the Empress. Well, let's see if we've thought about that a little bit more and not. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Sarah, I can do this by myself. You are too slow. It'll take you forever to finish. But... I look doubtfully at the spoon in front of me. When I wake up... Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot I was sick. When I found out I was supposed to be Empress, I passed out, but it wasn't because of that. It was because I was sick. When I wake up after my nap... Sarah insists on feeding me porridge. I want to feed myself, but my hands are still heavy with fever. Sarah's trying to help me by holding out the spoon in my mouth. But he's making me feel like a kid. I'm so embarrassed I could die. Hurry up, my arm's getting tired. Um... Sarah isn't backing down, so I slowly open up my mouth. It's not polite to open my mouth too wide. When I open my mouth just a little, Sarah starts getting frustrated. Do you even want this porridge? A spoon will fit in your mouth like that. S sorry <laughs> Aww, what a cute little picture. Yeah, it's nobody bus, you don't have to worry about being formal. I give up and open my mouth wide. Sarah sticks a spoonful of porridge into my mouth. It took so long to eat it that it got cold, but it has a gentle flavor. Don't tell me he cooked it himself. Sarah scoops up another spoonful from the bowl. Are you going to feed me the whole thing? Of course. Why would I only feed you one bite? Good point. It's no use fighting back, so I let Sarah feed me. That's enough. I feel a lot better now. Just from eating? You can't say that till your fever goes down. Sarah sits next to me as I lie down on the bed. When I try to get up, Sarah tells me to rest. Only if you rest with me. Suddenly, there's a knock at the door. Excuse me, I came to change the ice water. Sure, come in. The maid enters the room with a wash basin in her hands. I'll leave it on the table. Yes, sir. The maid places the basin on the table, like she's told, and leaves the room. It's like Sarah owns the room. Sarah hasn't left my room ever since he found out I had a fever. The maid even bought some of his things to my room. Now Sarah is carefully taking care of me. You don't have to worry about me. It's a little embarrassing, but I'm happy he's here, too. I hide my face in my blankets. Oh, <laughs> I peek out at Sarah <laughs> as he wrings out a cloth into the wash basin. Now I'm being the cute one. You are not just any girl. It would be a problem if something happened to you. Oh. My embarrassment cools off immediately when I realize he's talking about my bloodline. Sarah gives me a curious look. What's wrong? Uh, oh, nothing. Sarah's taking care of me so I can take my place on the throne. That has to be it. Why else would he take such good care of me? Because that's the only way he can marry you, is if you take the throne. Then you have control over your own life and who you want to marry. I turn my back to Sarah and close my eyes. Let's see, talk or sleep? I want to talk, of course. I might feel better if I talk to him more. Aren't you afraid of catching my cold? I turn back to Sarah. I don't catch colds that easily. Anyway, you're more important right now. I'm happy to hear him say that, but there's a part of me that can't help feeling sad. I wish he never told me about my bloodline. I'm only important because I'm the heir to the throne. He wouldn't give a second thought about me if that weren't true. That's not true. At this rate, everything sounds negative to me, so I close my eyes and fall asleep to escape my thoughts. <sighs> my room is dark when I open my eyes. It must be nighttime. My internal clock is all mixed up. When I sit up in bed, my body feels light. I put a hand to my forehead. My fever's gone down. That's good to hear. I turn toward the voice and see Sarah holding a lamp. It's all because of you, Sarah. I can't thank you enough. You don't have to thank me. I just want to get back to our conversation. What conversation? The one about you becoming the rightful ruler of this country. What's your answer? Ah, uh, back to that conversation. Uh, I already told him it's impossible, but I guess he hasn't given up yet. Sarah walks to the door and turns on the room lights. It's the middle of the night, do we have to talk about this now? 
Then he slowly walks back over to me. Are you still unsure? I think it's impossible for me to rule this country. It's not impossible. You know how the majority of the people are against Lord Amazaki's government. I guess. Sarah is probably talking about the rebels. I've definitely heard about them. There are rumors that they are even the ones who started the fire in town. But every ruler has his enemies. It would get even worse if the ruler was me. Don't worry. I've been watching you, and I know you can be a better ruler than Lord Amazaki. But where's your proof? When I look down at my hands, Sarah puts a gentle hand on my shoulder. You don't have to worry about anything. I'll make you the Empress. Sarah's strong words almost make me want to follow him, but that would just lead to more manipulation. I can't make a decision without thinking about it first. Now that I think about it, the usually calm Sarah sounds like he's in a rush. Sarah, why do I have to make this decision now? Because if you don't, you're going to get married to somebody else. This is a serious topic, so we should take our time to think about it. You're about to go off to be married. See, he doesn't want you to get married. Married? I forgot all about that. You can't rule over this country once you're married to a foreign prince. If you're willing to become the empress, we have to act now. But... Suddenly tears come to my eyes. Sarah looks down and talks to me like I'm a child. If you become the empress, you don't have to get married abroad. You're the one who will be making the rules. I can make the rules? Ever since I was taken from my home in the countryside, I've had to follow my brother's orders. He didn't do anything terrible to me, but... I've always been aware of the power he holds over me and my future. If I become the Empress, I can escape from his grip. That definitely sounds tempting. But I shake my head. This is all too sudden. I can't make a decision this fast. It's not sudden. I've been thinking about doing this even before I met you. Wrong thing to say! Before you met me... Sarah's never been this honest with me before. Yes, I've been trying to figure out how to take Lord Amazaki off the throne for years. I don't think he's the only one. It sounds like a, at least one of the other guys I'm going to be dating has a grudge against my brother. And once he was gone, who should take his place? When I met you, I realized it's not just your bloodline, but your strength and kindness that makes you the perfect ruler. Uh, it looks like he's actually been looking at me as a human being. That's a relief to hear. Were you planning things before I came to the palace? Togawa has secretly been sharing information with the rebels. Hmm. Togawa? You mean Kagimitsu? I didn't see that coming. This new piece of information fills my head with questions. Togawa has had ties to the rebels for a while now, so he's been helping me contact them. Well, I sure hope he's on my side. I suddenly remember seeing Sarah and Kagimitsu talking together outside. I couldn't tell what they were talking about at the time. Well, now I know. But maybe it was about the rebels. So, what have you told them? The points in the palace that had the least guards. What? That's a big deal! Really, you think? I start yelling angrily. How can you tell them that when you're a palace guard yourself? The rebels are a big asset to help throw Lord Amazaki off his throne. It's important to be in touch with them. I can't believe Sarah's been thinking about this for so long. The shock leaves me speechless, and I just gaze up at Sarah from my bed. I don't know how you feel about the rebels, but I think it's important to let the people know they have power. I suddenly remember hearing that Sarah doesn't kill rebels. Ah, so it wasn't just kindness. He really has been thinking about how to dethrone Soshi all this time. Oh, two choices in one chapter. When did this start? Oh, I want to know both, but oh well. When did this all start? When Lord Amazaki changed, and he started doing things that were blatantly against the previous regime. Huh, I wonder what happened. I guess we'll find out in his route. There are also suspicious rumors about how he came to power, but they haven't been confirmed yet. Suspicious rumors? That makes me want to know how Soshi became the Emperor in the first place. I'm curious why he would even want to become the Emperor. But first, I would need to understand him as a person. Why? How is that necessary for knowing how he became the Emperor? He might be my stepbrother, but I don't know anything about him. So, do you have an answer yet? I really haven't had much time to think about it. I've been delusional because I'm sick. I... Just to remind you, we're running out of time. Your wedding is soon and the rebels are about to start moving. <sighs> Sarah stares at me in silence. It looks like this conversation isn't over till I make a decision. I know we're running out of time, but I want to talk to Soshi before I make my decision. 
I don't think it's fair to leave him in the dark about this. <sighs> I was afraid you might say that. Sarah sigh, relieves some of the tension in the air, and I smile. <laughs> you know me too well. How is that funny? I'm just happy that you understand me. I don't know what you're talking about. I know Sarah wants to make me the Empress, but I convinced him to talk to Soshi about it first. Oh, that's not a good idea. If you're going to throw a coup, <laughs> you don't warn the guy you're trying to overthrow. I hope this conversation with Soshi will make a difference. I can't say I'm not scared, but I clench my fists, determined to do as much as I can. Uh, I get a chance to speak with Soshi the next day. I sit across from Soshi at the dining hall table for dinner. I know he doesn't like to talk during dinner, but things won't go anywhere if I don't talk now. I need to speak to him about ruling the country. I don't think bloodlines are good enough for me to claim the throne, but I want to hear what Soshi plans to do now that the rebels are increasing in power. I take a deep breath and glance at Sarah, who urges me on with his eyes. I'm really surprised Sarah's supporting this strategy. He talked me through this before we came to the dining hall. You're going to talk to him over dinner, right? Sarah speaks up when I start to head to the dining hall. I'll try, anyway. Does it have to be today? Not necessarily. But if you don't speak up now, who knows when you get the courage again? Huh. He's right. Just do what I tell you, and everything will be fine. <sighs> I don't like the way Sarah's acting. Just when I think I understand him, he turns into a different person when it comes to the throne. He doesn't pay attention to me, and I have no idea what's going through his head. I feel like he only thinks of me as the blood heir to the throne. Yeah, he's making me feel like a tool. He needs to tell me he has feelings. Now that I've seen another side of Sarah, I'm not sure I can trust him. As I head to the dining hall, my anxieties fester. I'm just being ordered around again. It's not only the throne, but my marriage too. I have so many things I want to talk to Soshi about that my courage suddenly leaves me and I fall silent. Ugh. So much for that! Great. We didn't even make it into this episode to talk to him. <laughs> we didn't say anything. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, next episode we'll see if we work up our courage for that later on or not. So I hope to see you there or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me. And I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.